gentleness Showing me your love Oh God, the gentleness that bananas require Speak to your gentleness with us And also the shape of a banana is like a cradle for a newborn baby. God, we thank you for the things that we are learning through this fruits of the spirit time. And may we continue today to learn more about being gentle, what that might look like, what that might mean for each of us. God be with us as we take another step in our journey through the fruits of the Spirit and gentleness today. Amen. There's only one more week in our summer series of the fruits of the Spirit, but I have enjoyed deeply getting to take a deeper look at each of these fruits week by week. And I have come to appreciate gentleness in a new way. I've been learning this in, in my life over the last several years, in fact. But this week, I think it really all came together with this message that is tied up in this spiritual fruit called gentleness. Elizabeth George says, gentleness is strength under control. It is the ability to stay calm no matter what happens. Gentleness under control. It's the ability to stay calm no matter what happens. Now, I can tell you, I haven't learned that completely. I haven't mastered that staying calm all the time under pressure. But several other things that I read said that when you abandon gentleness and you move into fear, that that's way more destructive than maintaining a gentle presence. And yet sometimes it's so hard to stay in that gentle place. So this week again, as per usual, I took my walk through the Bible, looking at the different themes and how gentleness is lifted up and talked about in the Bible. From the very beginning, the book of Genesis, we see how God walked with Adam and Eve. And they talked together. That walking and talking together from Adam and Eve to this very day is how we keep our connection with the divine. It's how we work on, struggle through, depend on, trust that relationship with God to be there. We walk together. So from that early time, it became the pattern of our relationship with God. One of the songs that are in many hymnals today is, contains the song that has these words. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me that I am his own. I love being claimed in that way, that God lets me know that I'm his own. And I think God is so ready for us to lean into that kind of relationship where we know God because we walk with God and talk with God and allow God to talk to us. In 1 Kings, uh, we see that the Hebrew people chose gentleness 
and that the world came together for them when they were able to be in that state of gentleness and they were unafraid. And then if they chose harshness, the universe kind of just splits down the middle. And I'm reminded of the phrase, a house divided among itself cannot stand. And I think about our country and how divided we are on many fronts. And pray that gentleness will lead us into a new way of being. In Obadiah, verse 10 says, violence earns judgment, but gentleness learns love. Then when we get into the New Testament, in the book of Luke, we hear the story about Jesus being the good shepherd. And then it, there was this concept that they shared that talked about gentleness. Gentleness and in time, or the, the shepherd, the, the metaphor of the shepherd and the sheep, and the shepherd was gentle. And in time, the virtue of the shepherd became the character of the sheep. Think about that for a minute. The gentleness of the shepherd became a virtue for that shepherd. And then over time, the sheep have a character about them that mirrors the shepherd. And I think about our lives and how we walk through this world and how our gentleness can shape us where gentleness is a virtue and then who we are, the character that we hold can influence others. I think about that a lot in these times of COVID-19, stay at home, everybody else looks like a carrier to us. When in reality, we should all treat the world as if we were infected. And so we wear a mask. And if everybody would do that, that gentle thing, it's very simple really, you just put on a mask. And that's how you are in the world. This mask says, I care about you. This mask won't prevent me from getting sick necessarily, but it cuts it down way uh, uh, exponentially. But what happens most is if I am a character, well, I am a character. But if I am a carrier, this mask goes a long way in preventing you from being infected. That and social distancing and all of the other things that we embody. But that, that sense of being kind and gentle with one another goes a long way. And I don't know about you, but when I see someone without a mask in a store uh, or in a closed space, I get a little anxious. And so I employ greater self-distancing. And uh, I try not to harbor anxiety about that exposure. Do you feel that way? Do you feel at times that you just find yourself anxious because people aren't wearing a mask or because people are wearing masks and we can only see this much of their face and how that makes us a little uptight? This COVID-19 isolation and separation where we can't hug those who don't live in our house, where we can't take off our masks when we're close with other people. 
It's a different way of being. But being called into that gentleness where we have a gentleness about us wearing our masks and we accept the gentleness in other people who do wear a mask and we ask for grace for those who don't. Moving on, First Peter. Practice gentleness by showing proper respect to everyone. You know, and I think, as I think about that, I think about Black Lives Matter and how people are still protesting. It's very peaceful these days, the protest. We don't hear much about it on the news anymore. But the need to protest continues. And I continue to stand with, support, pray for, donate money to organizations that are continuing the message of we need to remember and lift up Black Lives Matter. And we will continue to do that until our friends and neighbors, brothers and sisters of color no longer have to live in fear. It used to be that I, I heard a filmmaker talk about the fact that it used to be he was afraid of getting arrested. And now he's not afraid of being arrested. He's afraid of being killed because that's how many, many people of color are treated in this world, especially by law enforcement. And that is not to say that every police officer is bad because that is not true. And there are people who are working from within that organization to bring a more just way of relating to the people that they work for and with. We need to be gentle with ourselves and provide gentle but strong reminders to our congressmen, to our House of Representatives, to our representatives, both nationally and locally, that it's time for a change. It's time for us to see the dignity and the humanity and the worth and the value of all people and not based value and worth just on the color of our skin. In times like these, Gentleness with ourself is really important. How we take care of ourself physically by hand washing, by wearing a mask when we go out, by social distancing, by not hugging those people we want to hug when we're not part of the same household. April and I have met together and both of us have said, oh, I just wish I could hug you right now. And I'm sure many of you have felt that same feeling, but we don't because we respect this church and the fact that we need to be here as leaders and we set as good an example as we can for everyone. I just wonder what you're doing. What are you doing with yourself to be gentle with yourself? How many of you allow yourself to take a nap? During one of the meetings that I was in this past week, we talked about the fact that sometimes you just need a nap. And I remember that book that I read many years ago Everything I need to know I learned in kindergarten. They teach you to take naps in kindergarten. It's something that you need to know. And in this time, it's important to allow yourself to take a nap. Many of us have been living sleep deprived lives and now's a chance to be kind to ourselves and catch up. That being said, staying in bed all day, every day, 
is not the kind of gentleness that I'm talking about. So that leads me into who is it that you, well, one way to put it, who is it that's on your team? Who is it that you see, talk to, video chat with, to help you with your mental wellness? So many people are tired of hearing mental health this and mental health that. But I'm talking about mental wellness. How do we guard our mental wellness in a time like this when everything seems scary and we have to be far from people? My team, my family's on that team. Most of them live in the Midwest. My therapist is on that team. I have a few long time friends, some of them from high school, some of them since seminary, a couple of them since I got here. And I talk to them. There are online services for reaching out to mental health professionals that can help you when it gets overwhelming. Be gentle enough with yourself that you can reach out for help with no shame. The familiar rituals. What familiar rituals do you have in your life? I think about the life of the church and we have the ritual of communion. It's a time when we come together and celebrate communion. And we try to make that available to you in your homes if you choose to participate. But it's a way of connecting us not only with this church body, but with Christians around the world and throughout history to all of the saints who have gone before us. The familiar rituals, my older brother, John, calls my father every Sunday at five o'clock. They have both been in that habit of talking on the phone for about five years now. Who is it that you connect with on a regular basis? Familiar rituals may be stronger during this time when life seems so not normal. What about prayer? Are you finding that you pray more as you walk around and do things in your house and think of other people and just lift them up in prayer? That might be an option. And do be gentle with others. Get in that habit, that ritual of being gentle with other people. This is a highly stressful time. And Gandhi said a lot of cool things, but Gandhi had something to say about gentleness. Be gentle with people today. You don't know someone's inner struggles. Instead of being the last straw, you can be their first sign of hope. Let me read that again. Be gentle with people today. You don't know someone's inner struggles. Instead of being the last straw, you could be the first sign of hope for that person. May it be so. And please uh, sing with us as Nancy leads us in how like a gentle spirit. <laughs> 